Hey yo, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another video. It's your boy Jesse Keegan and your girl Fanny Mungu and we are Fanny and Jesse. So right about now we're going to react to a video that was suggested by somebody in the comment section below and before we go to that I want to say thank you to everybody out there who been subscribing. You guys are super amazing. Thank you so much. We are almost getting to 30,000 subscribers and uh, we'll be so happy if you get there before even the end of this year or something. That would be so amazing. And for the people who've been out there just you know sharing commenting and giving us suggestions in the comment section below you guys are super amazing so today we're going to react to we beg all muslims to watch this so without any further ado let's get it you are there with your wife your husband your children your friends your family your teachers those you attended the message with and you're looking at the gates of jannah you're awaiting for them to swing open who will be the first to knock from all of humanity? No one will knock before our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, before Idris, before Yaqub, before Sulaiman, before Adam, before Ibrahim, before Musa and Isa. He will come forward and he will knock. The angels will say, who is it? He will say, Muhammad. The angels will say, we have been instructed by Allah to not open these gates to anyone before you. And now the gates, they begin to swing open. They enter Jannah and angels are standing in their reception. Malaika whom you will see, angels whom you will hear, and they will speak to you. They are just as excited for you as you are for yourself. And what do they say? Come in, come in. They will say, Salamun Alaikum, peace be upon you. You've done so well. So enter Jannah, you will stay here forever. And the moment they enter Jannah, they find that inside of them is the knowledge of the whereabouts of everything. And that's why the Nabi Al-Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I swear by the one who possesses my life, they will know the directions to their palaces, to their terrains, to their kingdoms, better than they know the directions to their homes today. You come in and the maps of Jannah have been printed on your heart. You know where your hur are waiting, where your rivers are waiting, where your oceans of wine, where your kingdoms are. You know it's down this road. Take the second left from the palace of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Keep going down until you meet Yaqub. Take the first left from the second market. You know where to find everything that belongs to you. Allahu Akbar. And they enter Jannah and here they see scenes that defy description. They see meadows of endless perfection. They see things that no eye has ever seen and ears have never heard and they, their senses are about to be spoilt in the most lavish of all ways. And then they hear an announcement being made echoing through the gardens of Jannah. What does the announcement say? Oh people of Jannah, you will be given life. You will never have to die again. And you will be given health. You will never have to worry about illness again. And you will be given youth. Never will you go old again. And you will be given bliss. You will never be sad again. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said as Bukhari narrates, the space that is occupied by a bow in Jannah is better than this entire world and everything within it. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said, وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَ ثَمَّ يعني هناك, if you were to look over there in Jannah, Allah said, رأيت نعيما, you will see delights, وملكا كبيرا, and huge kingdoms. What is inside of these kingdoms? There's buildings. Allah said, ومساكن طيبة في جنات عدن, they will have pleasant dwellings within gardens of eternal residence. And Allah said, لَكِنِ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا Those who are mindful of Allah, لَهُمْ غُرَفٌ مِّن فَوْقِهَا غُرَفٌ مَبْنِيَةٌ We will give them elevated mansions, constructed one on top of the other. تَجْرِي مِن تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ Beneath them rivers are flowing. وَعْدَ اللَّهِ This is the promise of Allah. لا يُخْلِفُ اللَّهُ الْمِعَادِ Allah never fails in His promise. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لَبِنَةٌ مِّن فِضَّةٍ وَلَبِنَةٌ مِّن ذَهَبٍ وَمِلَاطُهَا الْمِسْكُ الْأَثْفَرِ He said, each building in Jannah is made out of alternating bricks of silver and gold, silver and gold, silver and gold. And he said, the cement that connects these bricks together is pure musk. How does that work? La ilaha illallah. Welcome to Jannah. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, for the believer in Jannah is a pavilion that is made out of a single hollowed out pearl and it is 60 miles high into the sky. What about the rivers of these kingdoms? As for the rivers of Jannah, Allah Jalla Jalaluhum said, Fiha anharun mimma in, ghayri asim. in Jannah there are rivers of water that never pollute. 
وَأَنْهَارٌ مِّنْ لَبَنٍ لَمْ يَتَغَيَّرْ طَعْمُهُ And rivers of milk, the taste of which never changes. وَأَنْهَارٌ مِّنْ خَمْرٍ لَذَّةٍ لِلشَّارِبِينَ And rivers of wine, delicious for those who drink. وَأَنْهَارٌ مِّنْ عَسَلٍ مُصَفَّى And rivers of purified honey, rivers. Go and swim in them, go and drink from them, go and enjoy them. The rivers of Jannah, I introduce to you the river of Kawthar. What is Al-Kawthar? He said, Al-Kawthar is the name of a river in Jannah. He said, the banks of that river are made out of gold. And the bed of that river is of pearls and corals. And its soil is finer than musk. And its water is sweeter than honey. And it is whiter than ice. He said, do you think that the rivers of Jannah are like the ones today? Trenches that flow into the earth, through the earth? He said, I swear by Allah, that's not the case in paradise. They flow on top of the surface of the earth. The rivers of Jannah flow on top of the surface of the earth, passing through the markets and around the palaces and near the pavilions. They are there for everyone to see their water and to see their luxury and for people to drink from. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, In paradise there is a tree where a rider will be able to travel through its shadow for 100 years. That's your entire lifetime and more. Just riding through its shadow for 100 years and he will not clear it. And then he said, read the ayah from the Quran where Allah said, وَظِلِّمْ مَمْدُودِ Extended shade. In Jannah, there is extended shade. Every tree in Jannah has its trunk made out of solid gold. Allah said, وَفَاكِهَةٍ كَثِيرًا So much fruit in its tons. لا مقطوعة ولا ممنوعة It's never seasonal and none of it is forbidden. Eat and drink. In Jannah, it's not about all you can eat. It's about all you want to eat. You're eating because of desire. You're not eating because of a want or a need. You're eating because of a craving, a yearning, a joy, pleasure. Pick from the pomegranates, pick from the palm trees, whatever wish, whatever type of fish or meat you may wish for, you find it there in front of you. No cooking needed, no purchasing needed. This is the food of Jannah. And then you have wine. Allah said about it, لا فيها غول There are no bad effects in it whatsoever. ولا هم عنها ينزفون It doesn't intoxicate them. That's the wine of Jannah. وسقاهم ربهم شرابا طهورا Allah will give them a purifying drink. That's wine. بيضاء لذة للشاربين It is white in color and it is delicious for those who drink from it. يسقون من رحيق مختوم They will be given a drink from a sealed nectar. Sealed, no one has touched it before you. Then he said, what? ختامه مسك The last sip of that drink is musk. What about the service? خدمة We all love being served. ويطوف عليهم ولدان مخلدون Allah said. There will circulate among the people of Jannah young boys of everlasting youth. Mukhalladun, everlasting youth. If you were to see them, you would think that they are scattered pearls. Yatufu, Allah said. They are circulating around them, all over the place. Meaning they're, they're full of energy. Wildan, young boys of everlasting youth. Because you know how it feels to be served by someone your age or older than you. It doesn't quite feel right. Allah says, you won't need to worry about that. There's no awkwardness in Jannah. They're all young and they were created to serve. And then Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As, the companion, he speaks about service in Jannah. Every person in Jannah will be served by no less than 1,000 servants. And yet each and every one of them is doing something different to his neighbor. How? I mean, if I was to ask you now, how would you like to be served? You know, maybe you can list five ways. I want to eat, I want to drink, I want a comfortable bedding. And then now you've got to use your imagination. If you can stretch it to 10 or 20 ways, you know, you're very creative. But then a thousand, a thousand ways of service? Ah, that means therefore that in Jannah, there are pleasures and enjoyments that transcend your human imagination. I mean, when Allah describes the vessels as وَيُطَافُ عَلَيْهِمْ بِآنِيَةٍ مِّن فِضَّةٍ وَأَكْوَابٍ كَانَتْ قَوَارِيرَ قَوَارِيرَ مِّن فِضَّةٍ That they will be drinking from cups that are made out of silver, yet they are crystal clear. How is that, La ilaha illallah? Cups that are of solid silver, yet they are crystal clear. And if this is the description of the servants of Jannah, as you heard Allah describe, what do you make of the beauty of those people of Jannah who are being served? The Prophet ﷺ said, no one urinates in Jannah, no one defecates in Jannah, no one spits in Jannah, no one blows their nose in Jannah. You don't need to do any of that. He said, their combs, they are made out of gold and their perspiration is musk. 
he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that your need for the bathroom in Jannah is in the form of light perspiration that is produced by your body and all of a sudden your stomach has shrunk and you're ready to eat again. Allahu Akbar. Allah said, وَنَزَعْنَا مَا فِي صُدُورِهِمْ مِنْ غِلْ We have taken out from their hearts all bad feelings. إِخْوَانًا عَلَى سُرُورٍ مُتَقَابِلِينَ So they will be like siblings reclining on thrones facing one another. Harmony, agreement, peace, unity, love, respect. These are the people of Jannah. What about the climate of Jannah? Allah says, مُتَّكِئِينَ فِيهَا عَلَى الْأَرَائِكِ They will be reclining on their adorned couches. لَا يَرَوْنَ فِيهَا شَمْسَا They don't see in Jannah a sun, ولا زَمْهَرِيرَ And they never experience a blistering cold. So how will they differentiate between morning and evening if there is no sun and moon? Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he has beautiful words. In Jannah there is no sun and moon and day and night. But people are able to differentiate between the morning and evening through light that they see coming from the direction of the throne of Allah Jalla Jalla. Markets. Muslim narrates that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, in Jannah there is a market that people visit every Friday. You go and you take what you wish. And there is no price expected from you. You've paid for that in dunya. He said, then the northern wind blows and scatters in their faces and scatters in their clothes. And so they increase in beauty and splendor. So they go back to their families and they are in this state. And their families, they say, by Allah, you've increased in beauty and loveliness after us. And they will say to their families in their homes, and by Allah, you have also increased in beauty and loveliness after us. You never have to worry about getting bored. And I know you think about this. If Jannah is eternal, surely I'm going to get bored. And there must be an end time. No. Allah said, they will live there forever. لا يبغون عنها حِوَلَا And they don't want to go anywhere else. You will not want to be transferred from Jannah. What about the spouses of Jannah? The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَوْ أَنَّ مْرَأَةً مِنْ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ طَلَعَتْ عَلَىٰ أَهْلِ الْأَرْضِ لَا أَضَاءَتْ مَا بَيْنَهُمَا وَلَا مَلَأَتْهُ رِيحًا if a woman from the women of Jannah was to look over into the life of this world, she would fill the heavens and the earth with her luminosity and she would fill it with her beautiful scent. That's just a glance. And then he said, And the garment that she wears on her head is better than this dunya and everything it has to offer. So if that is the beauty of the garment that sits on her head, what about the beauty of the person beneath that garment? La ilaha illallah. Allah says, وَحُورٌ عِينٌ They are حُور. حُور. As some of the linguists, they said, يَعْنِي يَحَارُ فِيهَا الطَّرْفِ Meaning your eyes, they wonder at her when you look. يَحَارُ حُور. They wonder in amazement. Well, where do I look? And what is this? لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ يَحَارُ فِيهِنَّ الطَّرْفِ And then عين, Meaning wide and lovely, pleasant and wholesome eyes. حُورٌ عين. Allah says, كَأَمْثَالِ اللُّؤْلُؤِ الْمَكْنُونَ They are like preserved pearls. And Allah said, They are like rubies and corals in their beauty. These are the women of Jannah. And as for the men of Jannah, the men, they are also a different creation. The Prophet ﷺ has described the men as being jurda, meaning they are free from bodily hair. Murda, they are free from beards. Their eyes are anointed with kuhul. Bani thalathin wa thalathin, they are at the prime age of 33 years old. They are strong, they are healthy, and they're fit. Because the Messenger ﷺ has described the men of Jannah by saying, I swear by the one who possesses my soul, each man in Jannah will be given the strength of 100 men with respect to his appetite to eat and drink and desire and matrimonial relations. They are bursting with vitality. They are bursting with strength and liveliness. They are wholesome, handsome, beautiful men. Everything that the eye of a woman desires, she finds it in Jannah. And everything that the eye of a man desires, he finds it in Jannah. Stress. There is stress in dunya. As for Jannah, the moment their eyes fall onto the pleasures of Al-Firdaus and the gardens of Jannah, what do they say? They say, Alhamdulillah, illadhi adhaba anna al-hazan. All praise is due to Allah who's removed grief from us, who's removed sorrow from us. Inna rabbana lagafurun shakur. Indeed, our Lord is forgiving and grateful. Alladhi ahallana dara al-muqamati min fadlihi, the one who's allowed us to live in this place of permanence. La yamassuna fiha nasabu wa la yamassuna fiha lughub. They say no hardship touches us here and no inappropriate behavior. In Jannah, people rest. And that's why when they asked Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, Oh Imam, when is it that people truly rest? He said, you will rest following the very first foot you take into Jannah.
When all is said and done, the Prophet ﷺ says to us that everything you've heard about Jannah is nothing in comparison to its reality. Because Allah said, I have prepared for my righteous servants something that no eye has ever seen, and no ear has ever heard, and no heart could ever imagine. This is Jannah. We ask Allah to give us Jannah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us Al-Firdaus al-A'la. It was interesting to watch but then I'm thinking some of the things being said are they from the Quran or the hadiths that's something I'd love to know but I guess it talks about what to expect when you go to heaven it's like reminding us of all the good stuff that awaits us I was wondering though why go to heaven and still have slaves why can't everyone just be equal eat whatever I want to eat, do whatever I want to do, whenever I want to do it because we've passed through all these things because doesn't that, isn't that like having someone work for you, like a slavish to some point? Yeah, I mean, you're saying you, you should be, you love what, a thousand services? Yeah. Yeah. Why have someone serve you when we? I don't know if they're referring to people serving you, like you being alone and you have thousand people serving you, or it was like different, like one thousand, yeah, offers, yes, yeah, different kind of services yeah. we offered to. And then there's also because they say youths will be those servers, mm -hmm. providing those services, or whatever the case is. And another thing that was mentioned here is the beard. Like men will be beardless. Something was implied <laughs> like that. So what's the whole point of Muslims having beards beard, on this yeah. earth? Yeah, and going to heaven and, have, and become beard, beardless. Yeah. And I'm trying to remember there's something that I asked you about. The wine. Yeah. I don't know if the wine is... Is the real wine they're talking about with the alcohol content or is just a wine that is pure with no... I think they're talking about pure wine with no I content. Think pure wine. Yeah. yeah, because it doesn't make sense to have wine. Is there, is there pure wine with no content? Alcohol content? Non alcoholic wine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That there? Yeah. Really? Yeah. So, the wine people drink, does it automatically have alcoholic content in it? Or there is wine and then now they put something in there? I don't know if they put something, but don't they feel. It's fermented. Not, yes. So when you ferment, it becomes alcohol. Like, I like guess. It kind of has the content. I don't have to add something. We're just going off topic there. <laughs> so, just let us know. I mean, you you asked a really good question. Are this uh, what we just watched? Is this from the Quran or is just from the hadiths or something like? That? Because it sounds so unrealistic at some point, you know. And again, it sounds realistic. But again, you have to look at it in a, in a different angle. The things that were mentioned in there, could somebody achieve that here on earth? Like? Imagine if you're rich, and you can have a thousand services. Mm -hmm. Imagine if you're rich, you could drink the purest wine ever. Imagine if you're rich, you could just be... Uh, I mean, this thing sometimes, I feel like um, they're really good to... Um, they're amazing stuff to listen to. But again, why why should we? Why can't we just try and achieve them here on earth? And then when we go to heaven, we all rejoice together. Do you mm -hmm. understand? I feel like, I mean, if if you can achieve this here, I mean, there's nothing wrong. You can become wealthy here. But again, I understand that uh, at some point, um, you rather uh, people say that I rather become rich. Um, what do you call this? In heaven than on earth. People but again, say I that? think. No, no, I've heard people say that. Mm -hmm. But I think it depends with your choices. You know, you can decide to live the way you want to live here on earth and then preserving it all the way for. But again, I think it's God who is, who is um, controlling you and giving you the, uh, the control or something like that. 
but then god has given us everything we need yeah. to do to achieve and live a good life Just but again you think about it does god really want you to be poor or does god really want you to be rich because when you look at the bible it talks about just um um it, it, god wants us to be rich god wants us to have wealth you know mm -hmm. wealth is part of those uh beautiful virtues that are out there so at, at no point does god want to see his people poor so even here on earth you can achieve all these things that have been mentioned here you know i mean um some things are just practical you can just have it done when you want when you when you're rich i mean when you're wealthy in in heart and also in the physical aspect like assets and all those kind of things it's a good thing to listen to but sometimes it can be really misleading when you if there's someone out there who can really explain to us what this really means just then we'll be ready to just like just look into it so yeah that's that let us know what you guys actually think about this video if there's anything you understand react to let us know down below by dropping the link or the name and we'll appreciate make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and we'll see you in our next reaction video and deuces